this video, I want to show how to use R in R Studio to look at the exponential function. The function we need is PEXP, and there's two values we need here. The first is the value of x, and the second we have rate equal to, and this is our value for lambda. And this is the cumulative distribution function, so it gives us the probability that it's smaller. So as an example, if our, ex if our parameter is 0.4 for our exponential distribution, what's the chance it lasts less than three hours? Let's say hours is our time unit here. And we can run that and see our probability is 0.6988. Let's suppose we want to know the chance that it lasts between three and five hours. In this case, we subtract. We always do the biggest minus the smallest one. So we have PXP of 5, comma, rate equal to 0.4, minus PEXP of 3, comma, rate equal to 0.4. So this will be the probability that it is between 3 and 5 hours. And we can see that the probability of that is 0.1658. So this is how we would find probabilities. This first one gives us the probability that this particular unit lasts less than three time units, while the second one looks at between, so between three and five time units. If we want a more than three, then we need to do one minus PEXP, since this is always giving us the probability of less than. Running it, we can see the probability that we, this lasts more than three time units, 0.30119. So these are the three ways we find probabilities on the exponential distribution using RStudio. We need a probability less than, between two values, or a more than a value. Next, let's look at the graph of the PDF of the exponential distribution. So I set up this function that returns lambda times e to the negative lambda x, which is exactly the PDF formula for the exponential distribution. If I let lambda be equal to 2, I have this distribution here. We can see that it starts at 2 and kind of drifts down very, very drastically at the beginning and then slows down here at the end. Next, we'll change lambda to 1. So we have 1 times e to the negative 1x. And we have this distribution here. So it does still start decreasing quickly and then slows down, but it's not as drastic as the previous one. Finally, I'll let lambda be equal to 1 half, and we can see now that it's not near as drastic. It's almost a straight line. So we can see that the smaller values of lambda get me closer and closer to a line, whereas the higher values of lambda give a very sudden drop at the beginning that slows down later on. Now let's look at the CDF. That was given by 1 minus e to the minus lambda x. So here we have the graph. We can see that we hit our peak very early on. So that tells me that most of my probability here is between 0 and 1. Next, I change lambda to 1, and we can see it's kind of leveling out. Now most of my probability is between 0 and 2. And finally, if I change lambda to 1 half, we can see that this is almost a straight line. It takes us much longer to get to the peak of our curve. 